I was standing there thinking what greater love is there than the love the Lord has for us. The chameleon. He's a cute little sucker, isn't he? <laughs> Blends in pretty well. There are over 200 species of chameleons. They are a member of the reptile family and come in many different sizes and shapes. The oldest identified species lived 60 million years ago. The word chameleon means ground lion. They do have some strange characteristics. Most have a prehensile tail. The tail curls up when it's inactive, but it uncurls. It can use the tail to wrap around limbs, you know, trees and things of that nature. They have strong, long, sticky, darting tongues. They have eyes that can rotate and operate independently from one another and can also see ultraviolet light. They can change color to a certain degree, manipulating the pigments in their skin. They may turn a lighter shade to reflect heat and a darker shade to absorb more heat. But the characteristic that they are most known for and that we will concentrate on here is the ability to adapt or blend into their surroundings. They have no claws or teeth and are not poisonous. Their main defense is to blend in or camouflage themselves from a predator. Now we all have the ability to adapt. We have to adapt to the cold, to the heat. If it's too cold, we can put jackets on or whatever. If it's too hot, we can wear short sleeves, get in air conditioning. And we probably know people that are kind of chameleon-like. We know some people, maybe at work, who are a totally different person away from work. I've known quite a few like that. Hard workers, don't talk much, but we get them away from work and watch out. <laughs> you may have friends the same way. Politicians are real good chameleons. Even sports figures or actors, they're chameleons. They act one way in front of the camera, but away from the camera, they're totally different. While it is good for chameleons in the animal kingdom to conform to their surroundings, it is not good for Christians in the kingdom of God to conform to their surroundings. Chameleons were created to conform, but believers are commanded not to conform. Twice in the New Testament we are warned against such con conformity. First in Romans 12.2 where Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. As believers, we are not to pattern our actions and lives according to the ways of the world. Compliance with the word and being meld into its mold is something we are to advert we should, not swim with, uh, we should not swim with the stream or run with the crowd. We are to resist the pressures and temptations of this sinful world so that we do not end up looking like the world. We are called to be different, transformed, not conformed. If we look so much like the world that we easily blend in, something is terribly wrong with all of us. And second, in 1 Peter 1.14, the Apostle Peter commanded us, 
As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Paul warned us about conformity to the world, and Peter is warning us about conformity to our old way of life, namely the passions and desires which ruled our lives before we were saved. Elsewhere, Peter urges us to avoid the passions of our flesh, but what he's referring to are the passions of our past. As children of God, we are not to be conformed to the lust appetites and desires which filled our lives our lives as unbelievers god doesn't want you to be a chameleon blending in with the world or conforming to your old inclinations instead god god wants you to be conformed to the image of his son i came upon part of a sermon that was written by Charles Haddon and he was a preacher and this is a short excerpt from this certain ministers are treacherously betraying our holy religion under pretense of adapting it to this present age the the new plan is to assimilate the church to the world by semi-dramatic performances they make the house of prayer to approximate to the theater. They turn their services into musical displays. They exchange the temple for the theater and turn the ministers of God into actors. Whose business is to amuse men? This then is the proposal. In order to win the world, the Lord Jesus must conform himself, his people, and his word to the world. I will not dwell on so loathsome a proposal. He wrote this in 1888. We still have the same problem. Anyone or any movement who feels the need to conform Yeshua, his people, and his word to please the world is definitely a Christian chameleon that we need to be aware of and avoid at all costs. There are a lot of chameleons in church. There are a lot of pastors and rabbis and reverends and whatever they call themselves that cater to the world and not God's word. They hide behind robes and talits. They are afraid to tell the truth and teach the truth because they are afraid to offend other congregants. They don't teach the entire word for the same reason. They hide behind their title of pastor or preacher who are supposed to be godly men, but away from the pulpit, they live sinful lives. They're chameleons. They're different when they go outside the doors. Yeshua himself tells us in John 15, 17, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it, that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. And note that Being no part of the world simply means that Christians should not participate in anything that, con that conflicts the word and the will of God. Jesus did not want his disciples to become antisocial and to avoid contact with non-Christians. Isolation would actually prevent a Christian from fulfilling the great commission to preach the word to the world. 
He wants us to be social. But he doesn't want us caught up in the world. We see this so much. And we probably know people. You know, the old saying, put on your Sunday best. That isn't to put on a disguise. That isn't to, you should be your best every Shabbat. Every day you should be at your best. But people do. They're chameleons. They walk through those doors and they adapt. Now they talk about God. Now they'll praise and worship God. But once the service is over, they walk out the doors and now they adapt back to the world. I know we all know people like this. You probably wouldn't even know them if you saw them on the outside. They act totally different. As I said before, we do adapt. We adapt to situations. We adapt to crisis. We adapt to emergencies. But we don't change our walk with the Lord. At least we shouldn't change our walk. We shouldn't change our belief. But there are many that do it. Many. I'm going to make a little comparison here, so bear with me. <clears throat> Most chameleons change from brown to green and black, but some can turn almost any color. A change can occur in as little as 20 seconds. A chameleon Christian blends in with their surrounding environment and allows the culture to influence their moods, their attitudes, and their character. Studies show that light, temperature, and mood causes chameleons to change color. Sometimes changing color can make the chameleon more comfortable. Sometimes it helps the animal communicate with other chameleons. Chameleon Christians, they change their identity in an instant in order to make themselves more comfortable. Chameleons have the most distinctive eyes of any reptile. Their upper and lower eyelids are joined with only a pinhole large enough for the pupil to see through. They can rotate and focus separately to observe two different objects simultaneously, which lets their eyes move independently from each other. This gives them a full 360 degree arc of vision around their body. They pray when prey is located, both eyes can be focused in the same direction, giving sharp vision and depth perception. Chameleons have very good eyesight for reptiles, letting them see small insects from a long five to 10 meter distance. Chameleon Christians, their vision allows them to see and experience every walk of life understanding where each path will lead, to, lead them to. They do not have focus or tunnel vision, but they are focused on everything surrounding them. While the chameleon's tongue is typically thought to be one and a half to two times the length of their body, which doesn't include the tail, It has been recently discovered that smaller chameleons have larger tongue apparatuses than their larger counterparts. Tongue projection occurs at extremely high performance, reaching prey in as little as 0 0.07 seconds. Christian chameleons, their tongues are long, seeking to belittle others in order to make themselves feel good. They refuse to be in the minority, but by degrading others, they become part of the majority and do what is popular, although it's not right. The feet of chameleons are highly adapted to movement in trees. 
These specialized feet allow chameleons to grip tightly onto narrow and rough branches. Each toe is also equipped with a sharp claw to help grip on surfaces when climbing. Chameleon Christians, they hold on to whatever is closest to them at the moment of opposition. Chameleons cannot hear much. Like snakes, chameleons do not have an outer or a middle ear, so there is neither an ear opening nor an eardrum. However, chameleons are not deaf. They can detect sound frequencies of the range to 200 to 600 hertz. Chameleon Christians, they refuse to hear the truth, but they do whatever appeases their flesh. It is not that they cannot hear, but they turn a deaf ear to what they know deep down is right. We're not actors in a great play of life. We're not chameleons. We should always be who we are and let our true color shine through. We are all individuals created by God. We all have different little idiosyncrasies. We all have different brains. We all have special talents. We're different, but yet we're the same. We should always be who we are, no matter where we are. You can disguise yourself. You can camouflage yourself, try not to be seen. You can try to blend in with the world, but you can't hide from God. He sees through it all. And he's the one that counts. You don't have to be a chameleon to survive. But you do need the Lord to survive this world. We all need the Lord. So I say, be who you are. Don't change. We must constantly walk in God's word and walk in the faith, the faith Yeshua has in us. It's not our faith, it's Yeshua's faith. He has faith in us. He loves us. He wants us to succeed. He wants us to be social. He wants us to go out and touch other lives. But we cannot hide from the truth. And the truth is, without the Lord, we are nothing. We can decide, decide, disguise ourselves all we want, but the Lord, Lord knows our hearts. He knows who we are. He knows what we We need to stand firm in our beliefs we need to stand firm in front of God. We don't adapt to the world. How many of us know chameleons? How many of us know some of these believers that pretend to believe on Shabbat. And like I said, you probably wouldn't know them if you saw them later. Some will sit here and praise and worship the Lord and leave and go out and cuss and swear and carouse. And what hurts me most is the chameleons 
who are supposed to be our leaders that behind closed doors we wouldn't recognize. They lead sinful, sinful lives. But on Sundays would stand up here in their holy garments and hold the sacraments. It's disgusting. It's a slap in the face to God. They will be judged harshly. We have to learn to see through all that and see these people for who they truly are. And the only way we can do that is by learning God's word, truly learning his word, and walking in that word every day, no matter where you're at. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can be in a grocery store. You can be at the dentist office. You could be at work. It doesn't matter. Be who you are and let people know that you walk with God because he is the only salvation we have. He's the only salvation those people have and we have to wake them up. We have to take their disguises off. We have to let them know that we know they're trying to hide and they're trying to blend in, but we see through that. And we can help. We can help them out of this pit. And maybe help lead them to salvation. I was thinking back, my years of playing in bars and other venues, and thinking back, watching these chameleons, watching these people change, watching, even had people from work come to, come to hear us play, and they were totally different people when I saw them there. We don't have to play act. I've known too many people like that. When I came back to the Lord, I totally changed. I wasn't the person I was before. And a lot of people saw that. A lot of my so-called friends saw that and didn't really like it. They didn't like who I really was because I wasn't playing the game anymore. I wasn't being the chameleon. I wasn't blending in. And they didn't like that. Needless to say, they weren't true friends. And they aren't friends. I have new friends. I have new friends that don't wear disguises. that are who they are, what you see is what you get, and I'm fine with that. I put my trust in those people, because I know they wouldn't lead me astray, and I know those people would tell me if I'm veering off the path with the Lord. So please, just remember, Always show your true color. Always show who you are. Don't try to be anyone else. You're special. You're special to the Lord. You're special to all of us. You're one of a kind. So don't change that. Because that's why we love you. That's why the Lord loves you. He created you that way. So if you've been living that life of a chameleon... Take the disguise off and be yourself and walk in faith and walk with the Lord every day, every minute, every hour of that day and be wise to the world and do not change. Amen? Amen.